start long and see how that feels. Does it feel good to have your arms long and slowly lower your forehead so your forehead is on the mat. Your fingers are spread wide and you can rock your forehead back and forth to bring a little massage to your forehead, to your temples, and just notice your natural breath in, that, in this pose. See how you're breathing in and out. Check out your body. How does your body feel? Are your hips tight? Are your shoulders tight? Does anything feel particularly good? Does anything feel particularly tight? And notice that and breathe. Rocking back and forth. Stretching your fingers wide. Keeping your elbows on the mat right now. And set an intention for your practice. Maybe it's to bring ease. Maybe it's to bring flexibility. Maybe it's just bringing somebody into your heart who you um, want to wish well. Maybe it's just wishing yourself well. But this intention will help carry you through the practice. Breathe in and out. And start your ujjayi breathing, constricting the back of your throat, breathing in and out through your nose. This victorious breath, bringing an audible quality to our breath that reminds us to breathe deeply. Stretch your fingers long, press your fingers into the mat now and see if you can lower your hips down even further towards your heels. Bringing the eye of your elbow up off the mat, making this an active pose. Draw your shoulders down your back and breathe. Press again, sink your hips deeper, really press your fingers into the mat. Now your arms are straight and long and you continue to breathe. And on your next inhale, come up to tabletop pose. Your pointer finger is at 12 o'clock. Your fingers are wide. Your hips are right on top of your, your knees and your ankles are straight out behind your knees. Your toes are flat on the mat. Your shoulders are plugged into the shoulder socket and draw the crown of your head towards the wall in front of you. Engage your abdominal muscles. And we're gonna do several rounds of cat-cow. So look up, pop your booty, drop your belly. Exhale into cat, round your back, draw your chin to chest. Cow, look up, drop your belly, pop your booty. Exhale into cat, really accentuate the swivel of your hips. Cow again, inhale, Exhale deeply into cat. Kick your left toes out, place them on the mat behind you and cupcake your right fingers on the mat in front of you. Breathe here and out. Now raise your right hand and your left toes. Your foot is stamping the wall behind you. You're reaching out like you want to shake somebody's hand in front of you. Now draw that right elbow to your left knee. Exhale. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, crunch in. One more time. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, crunch in. Bring that knee right up to your nose and now lower it down to the mat. Another round of cat-cow. Cow, look up. Exhale. 
cat. Good. Now pop your left fingers out and put your right toes on the mat behind you. So we're cupcaking our left fingers, like our fingers are coming up around a cupcake, and our right toes are behind us. Breathe here. Plug your, plug your shoulder into the shoulder socket so you're not arching your back. Your back is straight and long and the crown of the head is drawing right up towards the front of the room. Now lift your right hand, uh, sorry, your left hand and your right toes. Your toes are flexing down, you're stamping the wall behind you. Exhale, bring that elbow to knee. Inhale, extend it out. Exhale, bring that elbow to knee. Inhale, extend it out. This time, bring elbow to knee and try to bring your knee up to the nose and lower down, back into cat cow, look up cow. Arch your back, cat. One more time, up for cow. Arch your back for cat. Well done. So your hands are wide, your pointer fingers are at 12 o'clock, your shoulders are plugged in. Now I want you to tuck your toes. So your toes are on the mat and lift your knees up off the mat, just two inches. Feel the engagement in your abdominal muscles. Lower your shoulder, so your shoulder blades are plugged in. Draw the crown of your head towards the front of the room and put your knees back down on the mat. Good. Breathe in and out. One more time, lift your knees up off the mat, maybe just two inches, breathe here. Breathe in and out and lower down, breathe. Now walk your hands out a little bit closer to the top of the mat, maybe, maybe just four inches. And we're gonna come into our first down dog of the day. So I want you to slowly lift your hips and begin to pedal out your feet one heel down and then the next heel down. And just pedal out. Notice again how your body feels. I've got something out of my, good. Just continue to pedal. How do your hands feel? How do your wrists feel? Pedal and pedal. Now move forward and come back on your knees. We're gonna sit in hero pose. That means our butt is on our feet. You can be up on a block if that's more comfortable. Place a block right underneath your, your sit bones and come back and sit on them. Either right, sit up tall. We're gonna stretch out our wrists a little bit because um, for a lot of people, when we do down dog, you really feel it on your wrist. So first thing we wanna do is Extend our hands out long in front of us like we're stopping someone. We're going to open and close our fingers 30 times. But I really want you to really squeeze in and then open wide. So we're really giving a lot of flexibility to our hand. Now, if this is a lot, if you've got arthritis in your hands, go slowly. Squeeze only as much as you can. So extend your arms long, plug your shoulders into the shoulder sockets. Sit up tall, drawing the crown of your head up and open and close. And I will count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Good. Now let's place our, the back of our hands on the mat in front of us. You can be maybe six inches in front of your knees. Here we are, our fingers are facing each other and I want you to bend your elbows. Now straighten your elbows and go like you're going into cat. So you're rounding your back. We're trying to give some stretch into our wrists by doing these movements kind of isolating our wrists and stretching them out a little bit. Now place your fingers, your, your the hands here, I mean the back of your hands are on the mat. Your fingers are now facing your knees. And again, I want you to bend your elbows so your chin is kind of coming down to your hands. 
straighten your elbows and then try to go back into a cat position. And now come forward, bend your elbows, come back up, go back into cat. Now place the palms on your mat. Your fingers are facing the edge, either edge of your mat. And again, bend your elbows, come back up, go into a cat, come back up, bend your elbows, and come up and go into cat back. Great. Now clasp your hands in front of you, reverse. Draw your arms up overhead with your hands clasped. Now bring your hands behind you, clasp your hands behind you. Draw your shoulder blades down your back. Great, good job. Now let's come right back into a downward facing dog and see if you feel different. So I want you to look at your hands, place your finger, your pointer finger, so it's at 12 o'clock. Your hands are wide. There's a lot of power in that L, in that L shape where your pointer finger and, and thumb meet. And come up into down dog and gently pedal out your feet, making an, any adjustment to your stance that you need to. Maybe your feet have got to move back a little bit, whatever feels comfortable. So in down dog, we're really making the shape of a V. We want to bring some flexibility to our arms. Our arms are not locked. And our head is between our triceps. We can come up high on our toes. Come up as high as you can and then sink down. Once again, come up high. And now sink your heels down. And we're doing this on breath. Inhale, come high. Exhale, sink your heels. And one more time, come high and now tiptoe to the top of your mat. Lots of just the smallest little teeny itsy bitsy steps. You're gonna come forward. You're gonna come up onto your fingertips as you come forward. Walk your toes forward about a foot from the top of your mat. Stay here, breathe. Fingertips on the floor. You're still on your toes. So now we're trying to wake up our toes. And now I want you to bring one hand to your shin, breathe here, start to straighten your back, drawing the crown of your head towards the wall in front of you. See if you can lift the other hand. We're in a balance on our toes. Lower down, place your fingers on the mat and try that again. Bring one hand to your shin, you're on your toes. Now try to bring your other hand to the shin. Straighten your back and lower down, lower your heels, lower your fingers. Now with your heels on the mat, come up to that flat back. So here we are, your hands are pressing into your shins. They can also be up at your thighs. I do typically my hands on my shin. Draw the crown of your head forward. You're releasing your lower back, your back is straight. Your shoulder blades are right, right tucked in. You're not arching your back. Your back is straight. This should feel good. Exhale, lower. Inhale, come up to mountain pose. Your arms are up overhead. There you are. I'm still trying to get my camera set, sit, situated. Stand there in, in mountain pose. This is, a, this is a strong, strong, strong pose, right? Our arms are up overhead. Your fingers are sparking up to the ceiling. So like, they're just like, they're like spark plugs. They're sparking up there. Look up at your fingers. Look up at the ceiling or the sky, wherever you are. Bring your hands to heart. And though we've been working already in this practice, we're gonna, we're gonna give a good ohm. Press your knuckles into your chest wall. Your elbows are wide. Bring some bend to your knees. We're in true north. Our toes are at, are straight ahead, our knees are right over our ankles, our hips are right over our knees, our shoulders are over our hips. Draw your chin back. Your ears are in line with your shoulders. So this is true north alignment. 
The crown of your head is drawing up and you can feel engagement in your abdominal muscles. Breathe in and out. Breathe in again. Oh. look up forward fold dive down and then exhale inhale halfway lift step back for high plank look at your fingers your pointer finger is at true north your shoulders are plugged in your body is straight so there's a straight line going from your head right down to your heels breathe here lower down just halfway your elbows are bent, you're only halfway down. Now come up to upward facing dog. Your knees can be on the mat or raised and roll back to downward facing dog and breathe and start to pedal again. Hopefully you'll feel at some, a certain moment that your heels are going down a little bit more. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Step your right foot forward. We're going to come into a warrior one. So your right foot is bisecting your left foot. Your left foot is digging in. The blade edge of your left foot is digging into the mat behind you. And here's where looking at your, your screen can help. I'm looking at myself and I can scooch my right foot forward a little bit so I can come into a deeper, a deeper position with my legs. Place your hands on your hips and do some self alignment here. So you want to draw your left hip forward and your right hip back, but you're still bending that right knee over your right ankle, okay? So your pelvis is neutral. You're not popping your booty out and you're not popping your belly out. You're just neutral. And you're slowly, gently trying to twist your hips to face the wall in front of you. And as you do that, your shoulders will kind of follow suit. Crown of your head is up. Now bring your hands up to cactus. So you're in cactus arms, breathing the whole time deeply, using that Ujjayi breath to remind you to breathe. And now bring your arms up overhead, wrapping your triceps around your ears. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Pin with your hands down to the mat and step your right foot back. Come into downward facing dog, pedaling your feet. Roll forward on your toes. Bring your torso through your arms and look up. And now roll back, using your abdominal muscles to lift your hips up and you're coming back. Here we are, breathe. Step your left foot forward for warrior one. So the same deal, your left foot is now bisecting your right foot. The blade edge of your right foot is digging into the mat. See if in your screen, you can, or just looking down at your leg, can you scooch that left leg forward a little bit to come into a deeper stance? And again, place your hands on your hips and gently rotate your left hip back, your right hip forward, but not compromising that bend in your left leg. Breathe. Sit up tall, the crown of your head is drawing up. Come bring your arms to cactus and then raise them up overhead for a full warrior one. I rotate my hands so that my pinkies are facing each other. That helps me get a better rotation in my shoulders. Breathe here. Notice if your belly's popping, draw it back. Look down at that left knee. Is it caving in? Draw it back out to the left. All the while sinking as we breathe in and out. 
and you can wheel your hands down and slowly step back for downward facing dog. Roll forward, bring your torso through. You're on your toes, your torso is coming through kind of like you're coming into an up dog. Look up and now using your abdominal muscles, lift your hips and roll back. Good deal. Breathe in and out. Now I want you to step your right foot forward, just your right foot. Come high on your left toes. We're going to come into lizard lunge. Scooch that right foot over so it's closer to the edge and bring your hands on the inside of your right foot. So both of my hands are wide, they're on the mat, and they're on the inside of my right foot. My left knee is raised, but you can put it down on the mat. It, that doesn't matter at all. So do whatever feels comfortable. Your toes, if your foot is, if your knee is down, your toe, your left toes can be flexed or they can be flat. That's not the point of this pose. The point is we're doing a hip opening. So already we're getting a hip opener. And if this is enough, you just stay here. If you like, and you feel like you, that, that it's a good thing for your body, lean into your right knee with your right shoulder and gently press that knee towards the right. This is lizard lunge and it's a very good hip opener. Breathing deeply in and out, using your breath to ease you through maybe a sense of discomfort you have here. So discomfort in my book is okay. Ouch is never okay. So breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Now, if your toes are flat, I want you to tuck them and I want you to to come up in, or actually bring that right foot over a little bit more towards the middle of your mat and come up into a crescent lunge with your knee on the ground. Your toes can be tucked or flat. Here we are, where our arms are up overhead, we're in crescent. Now, if this is easy, try coming up and bringing that left knee up off the mat. If that feels like too much, just keep that knee down. Bring your hands to heart in prayer and twist to the right, hooking your left elbow around that right knee. You're stacking your shoulders. You're high in your left toes and the crown of your head is drawing towards the front of the room. Breathe here. If your belly is in the way, try to draw it in and try to raise that belly up over that right thigh. Breathe in and out. And slowly make your way back up to crescent. And hands to the mat, step back for downward facing dog and continue to pedal. Your right leg might need a little bit of a, a little bit more of a pedal than your left. Good, breathe in and out. If you've lost your breath, if your breath feels ragged, Breathe in and open your mouth. <sighs> That's a good way of cooling yourself down if you're hot and also helping to regain your breath. We're going to do the same thing on the left side. So I want you to step your left foot forward between your hands or as far forward as you can. Bring both hands to the inside of your left foot, maybe you scoot your left foot so it's closer to the left edge of your mat. Again, your knee can be up or down. That is unimportant. And this may be enough. Feel this stretch. That knee is bent right over the ankle. Or if you want to add on, lean into that knee with your left shoulder and breathe. These deeper stretches, it's a good idea to hold them for a little bit longer to get the full benefit. And 
in this, in the yin form of yoga, where you're holding for longer, there's a certain moment where you kind of can feel your ligaments release. It's a great feeling. I don't, I haven't yet felt it yet on the side, but when you can kind of just feel this, ah, this kind of relax into the, the position. Good. Now scooch that foot, that left foot, maybe a little bit closer to the middle of your mat. And you can tuck your toes or leave your knee on the mat. It doesn't matter, but we're gonna come up into crescent lunge where we're bringing our arms up overhead and we're, our, our triceps are right around our ears. Breathe here. If this feels kind of easy and you wanna challenge yourself, tuck your toes and come up, bring your right knee up off the mat. Now, bring your hands to heart in prayer and twist to the left, hooking your right elbow around your left knee and stacking your shoulders, drawing the crown of your head forward, breathe. You can definitely be down on your right knee. There's, there really, it's, it's totally your choice, your position, your practice. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Good. And now pinwheel your hands back down and slowly step back for downward facing dog. Good. Breathe in and out and pedal. Pedal and breathe. While we're on the warriors, I want you to step your right foot forward and come into warrior two now. So here we come up, come up slowly. You're bending, maybe you can scooch that right foot forward a little bit and get into a deeper warrior. In this warrior, our hips are actually facing the wall to our left. So you could place your hands on your hips and see if that alignment is working. And your shoulders are right over your hips and you can draw your arms out long so that they are, they are absolutely parallel with one another. Your fingertips are reaching for opposite walls and look over your right forefinger. So your gaze is over your right forefinger. When you breathe in, we expand. When we exhale, we sink deeper. So I want you to breathe in, expand. Notice if your toes are gripping the mat. Try to ungrip them. Breathe in and out and sink. In and out and sink. Reverse your warrior. Your right hand goes up to the ceiling. Your left hand goes down your left leg. Look up at your right forefinger. Breathe. In and out. Place your right forearm lightly on your right thigh and now draw your left hand up to the ceiling. So now we're in side angle. We're still very bent over that right knee, but we're looking up and extend your side angle, drawing your tricep, your left tricep to hover over your left ear and your fingers are sparking, trying to reach that wall in front of you. Your right forearm is lightly on your right thigh. You're not dumping there. So there's no dumping. It's just lightly placed there. My right palm is facing the ceiling. Breathe. Breathe in and out. Come back to warrior two. Arms spread wide and strong. We're going to come into a wide leg forward fold. So I want you to rotate your right toes so they are now facing the left side of your mat. Your left toes are facing the left side of the mat and you're kind of pigeon-toed. Look down. So here we are, we're gonna, we're gonna fold over. We're gonna fold over and um, there's different hand positions you can, you can go into. You can grasp your hands behind your back. So that's one, one position. You can do reverse namaste, which is, prayer, but behind your back, you can do that. You can simply bring your arms up overhead, look at your fingers, 
come down halfway. So you've got this halfway, halfway fold where you've got a straight back and now lower down completely. Hands can be on the mat or if they're in another position, that's fine. Bend your elbows and try to draw the crown of your head down towards the mat. Breathing the whole time, breathe in and out. Maybe rocking a little bit, bending your right knee and then your left knee. And you'll feel that kind of big stretch on the inside of your thigh. Breathe in and out. And see if you can sink just a titch lower. And slowly make your way up. Half lift. And come up all the way. Good job. We're going to do the same thing, only on the other side. So just turn your left toes to face the back of your mat. And we're coming into warrior two on this side. So look down. Is your heel about midway through your right foot? Good. The blade edge of your right foot is really digging into that mat. This leg is strong. It's very engaged. Now let's, let's look at that bent left knee. Is it really bent over your ankle or can you go a little deeper? Check out your hips. Are they turned? Are they at the side wall? Maybe you can give yourself a little adjustment there. And bring your arms up into a T. Strong. Arms are parallel. Gaze over your left forefinger and sink. Breathe and sink. Breathe and sink. Reverse your warrior. Left hand goes up, right hand goes down your right thigh. Look up at your left forefinger, breathing, and now gently place your left forearm on your left thigh and bring your right hand up overhead and look at that forefinger or thumb. So we really want to see if we can, when we say stack our shoulders, we're trying to get everything kind of lined up. Alignment's hugely important. And then bring that tricep so it's hovering over your right ear as we come into extend, extended side angle. Breathe here. This is a big psoas stretch, big side body stretch. Breathe and sink. Breathe and sink. And slowly make your way back to warrior two. And listen, this time, turn your left toes. So your left toes are facing the left back corner of your mat and turn your right toes. So your right toe is facing the left um, front corner of your mat. We're coming into goddess pose. So here's the deal with goddess. Either extend, extend your stance or bring it in. But what we want is to not have our knees sinking. So it's a real easy to have your knees going in. You want to draw your knees out and you want to sink so your knees are over your ankles. Straight back, crown of your head is going up to the ceiling. Shoulder blades are down your back. Here we are. Your hands can stay here or they can come into cactus or we can start to move them. So when we bring our elbows in, we sink deeper. And when we breathe out, we bring our arms out a little wider. We're kind of making this W action with our arms. Breathe in and out. In and out. One more time. Breathe in and out. Good deal. And just come around and find a comfortable standing position, Tadasana. Check out your alignment. Bring some bend to your knees as we move into some balance work. And um, the people who have been doing this practice with me for a while um, know that balance is, for me, um, something that I have always been kind of challenged by, but we know how important it is, so we practice it. <laughs> and 
that actually has become actually my favorite segment because it's a challenge, right? Um, so what is balance? Look down at your left foot. Your big toe is at, is, is at 12 o'clock. You've got some bend in that standing leg, in that left leg. The muscles in your abdominal area are engaged. That feeling of zipping up your favorite pair of blue jeans. You're not sucking in, you're just engaging. Those muscles wrap around, many of them, to our lower back, and it is what helps stabilize us. So it's very important to have engaged abdominal muscles. Our chin is drawn back. We're not going forward. We're back. Everything's in alignment. We find a drishti point straight ahead, something that's not moving that we're going to gaze at. So take your uh, eyes off of the screen. Find that thing in front of you that is not moving and gaze and breathe. And slowly lift your right foot off of the floor. It, it doesn't have to be more than an inch and it could be six inches, it doesn't matter. And your hands can be doing whatever they need to be doing. That doesn't matter either. Breathe here. Now place your left hand on, I'm sorry, your right hand on your right knee, drishti and open that knee up to the right as you extend your left arm long to the left. And if you're able, try to slowly turn your gaze to your left thumb. One more breath and slowly bring that knee around and back down to the floor. That, my friends, is really all that balance is. It's, we're bipeds, we're coming up onto one foot. So let's do that again. Find that drishti point. Now, of course, in challenging ourselves in this pose, we're moving that drishti. We're going slowly to our thumb that's extended. And that's super challenging, but just practice it. If you fall out, it doesn't matter. You just come back into it. So find your drishti that's not moving in, in front of you. Bring all those alignment cues into play. Engage your abdominals, feeling strong, crown your head is up. And slowly just lift your left foot up off the mat. It could be an inch, it could be two. Bring some bend to your standing knee. Now grab your left knee with your left hand and slowly open it to the left as you extend your right arm long to the right. And turn your gaze. See if you can open your knee a little bit more. Breathe in and out and bring that foot down. If you're like me, one side always feels a lot different than the other side. And here we are. So now place your right foot on the mat. So your toes, I've, I'm now turning my, um, my orientation so that my right toes are facing the front of my mat. And we're gonna come into a airplane pose. So it's really nice to lift into airplane using our muscles. And we do that by bringing some bend to our knees. So we're not locking our knees out using our, our bones to get up there. So here we are, um, slowly shift your weight into that right foot. And as you do so, slowly lift your left foot, come up on your toes and slowly lift that foot off of the mat, drawing your arms behind you, your pinkies are drawing towards one another as the crown of your head draws towards the front of the room. Lift that left leg a bit more. Try to come into a straight line. Breathe. A little up dog in your chest. One more breath. And lower down. 
good job. Let's do that on the other side. So sometimes we say, and I actually like this kind of concept, it's like you're going through molasses. That's how slow, you don't have to like push into it. In fact, you don't want to. You want to be kind of thoughtful about how you get there. So bring your right toes now behind your left. Your feet can be hip width distance apart to start. And you can start with your arms up or down by the side. Just slowly come up onto your right toes and lift that foot off the mat as you draw your arms back behind you. Your gaze can be, my gaze is kind of in front of me as I draw that leg up a little higher, drawing my pinkies towards one another, a little up dog. And I breathe. And lower down. Good job. Come on to a seated position. Maybe this is now where you're going to take a drink of water. And because we're just all such fabulous yogis, we're going to do a little bit of core work. So I want you to come into your high boat position. So you can be back on your forearms, knees bent. That's cool. You can grab the back of your thighs. That's cool. You can straighten your legs, but you want to be right there at the point in your back. See if you can rock a little bit. That's where you want to be. You don't want to be too far. Um, you, you don't want to be either way on your back or way on your butt. You want to be at that rocking point. So whatever your high boat is, come into it and lower on an exhale to low boat. Look at your toes. Use your abdominals. Come back up to high boat and lower down. Inhale up to high. Exhale, lower down and come onto your back. I want you to come into figure four leg. So place your right knee on your left, sorry, your right ankle on your left knee. And I want you to then bring that left leg up. So you're at a 90 degree angle with that leg and grab that left thigh with your hands. Place your right elbow on your right knee and press it away. So we're in figure four. On an inhale, draw that left thigh closer to you. On an exhale, press away. Inhale, draw closer. Exhale, press away. One more time. Inhale, draw closer. Exhale, press away. And lower down and switch. So now your left ankle is on your right knee. You're going to grab that right thigh with your hands. My shin is now parallel to the mat. And I'm now I've got my left elbow on my left knee. I'm flexing my left toes. It's always a good idea when you come into these um, stretches like this, this, and, and half pigeon to flex your toes because, in some ways, it protects that knee. And you just press away. So on the inhale, draw that. I will go closer and exhale, press away. Do that for three rounds. Good. And lower down. We're going to do a, just a couple bridge poses. So you can do supported bridge. So you bring a block underneath your sacrum and you just Lift your hips high enough to get that block there. Your arms are flat on the mat. Your feet are strong on the mat at true north, at, at pointing straight ahead. And either supported or not supported, bring your hips up. You're, you, feel your, you, you feel the weight shift from maybe a lower part of your arm to 
Now your shoulders are largely on the mat, but you're still pressing your arms in, into the mat and you're pressing your feet into the mat and you're unclenching your butt. So it's not about using um, that major muscle to come up. It's about using your legs and your arms. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Another breath in and lower down. Good job. Windshield wiper your knees back and forth. Take a big deep cleansing breath. And we're gonna come up for our second bridge. So again, it can be supported with that block underneath your back. Graze your heels with your fingertips. That's where you want your feet to be. Plaster your full arm into the mat and your feet and use your feet and arm to lift your hips up. And you'll feel the weight kind of rolling back into the, your shoulder blades and that's fine. Draw your thighs together. They're not touching. You just want to draw them towards one another. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. One more time. Breathe in and lower down. Good job. Supta Konasana. So the soles of your feet are together. Your knees are wide and butterfly. One hand goes on your belly, one hand goes on your heart. Bring your knees in tight. Roll up into a little ball. And I want you to rock up to a seated position. And we're going to take a twist. So I want you to, the, the twist we usually do is Lord of the Fishes. So extend your right leg long, bring your left foot over your right leg. So my left foot is now on the, um, my left foot is now on the outside of my right knee. And I bring my right elbow on the outside of my left knee. My right fingers are pointing towards the ceiling. And I bring my left hand behind me and I twist. Breathe and twist. Look over your left shoulder. Breathe and twist. So we inhale, we sit up tall. On the exhale, we twist a little deeper. Good. Just come around, maybe do a counter twist and switch legs. Left leg is long, right leg comes over. The outside of your right foot is now on the outside of your left knee. Your left elbow is on the outside of your right knee and your right hand is behind your hip. And we're slowly turning so that we're going to look over our left shoulder. Breathe and turn. And come back around to a little counter twist. Good. If you have a block, we're going to do a, we're going to do some uh, inversion. I want to do waterfall. So place the block underneath your hips, and your feet should just pop right up. This is the position that I think is is great for us. If you don't have a block, you can go into shoulder stand. Or you can simply go over to the wall and get your legs up the wall with your sit bones as close to the baseboard as possible. Your back is flat, your arms are flat, your heels are right over your hips. So they're not back coming towards your head and they're not going towards the wall in front of you. They're just straight up over your hips. Breathe, take a couple deep breaths. This is a, you know, this is a, um, a restorative pose to bring the, uh, you know, the blood flow back into your major organs. We just need to be here for just a bit. Breathe in and out. 
in and out. And slowly make your way down in whatever pose you were doing. Make your way back onto the mat. Draw your right knee into your chest. And now draw it over to the left side of your body. So your knee is bent. It's coming over. It's trying to touch the floor on the left. Your hips are stacked and your right arm goes long out and you're going to gaze over your right thumb. This is supine twist. Breathe in and out. A great lower back release. It's also great for your digestion. Breathe in and out. Good, and roll back to center and do the same thing on the left side. So your right leg is long, draw your left knee into your chest. And now maybe with the assist of your right hand, draw that knee over. It is now trying to reach the floor on the right. Your left arm is long, gaze over your left thumb, breathe in and out. Your hips are stacked. and come back, stretch your arms out overhead like you're in your first early morning stretch, and Shavasana, bring your arms long beside you, flop your palms open to the ceiling to receive and your feet flopped out to the side, we'll be here just for a minute or two, resume just your normal breath. Bring some movement to your fingers and toes. And roll on to your side, cradling your head in your arm, and take a few rounds of breath here. Slowly make your way up into a comfortable seated position with your eyes closed. Sit up tall, bring your hands to your heart center. We'll end practice with the way we began with the sound of one ohm. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. Say, namaste, namaste.